Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today we're going to be looking at recording electric guitars using the Amp Designer plugin. Amp Designer is a virtual amp plugin that lets you record electric guitars without having to plug in and set up a microphone on a real amplifier. I can show you everything you need to know to record guitars this way, so let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create an audio track to record our guitar on. Now we have two choices here. We can either create just a regular audio track like you would when you're recording vocals, or you have the option for this guitar or bass track. Now this guitar or bass track gives you some presets right off the bat, and we'll take a look at those a little bit later, but for now I'm gonna start from scratch with just our basic audio track. Now we have to make sure that our audio input and output are set correctly and that we have the correct audio device associated with it as well. So this is gonna be your audio interface. So for me at the moment, it's this Profire 2626, which is correct. So that's where I'm gonna be plugging in my guitar into. If your audio interface isn't listed right now, then you wanna click this little arrow here, which is gonna open up our preferences. And then you wanna change your input device to your audio interface. And that's gonna be where you're gonna plug your electric guitar into. Your output is gonna be set to however you're listening back. So that's generally gonna be your audio interface as well. And the other setting you should take a look at is this IO buffer size. So when you're recording, generally you want to have a smaller buffer size, which is going to give you less latency. So latency is the amount of time it takes for the audio to enter Logic and then come out of, back out of your speakers. So sometimes you'll get a bit of a delay that might sound like a bit of an echo and having a smaller buffer size will help reduce that amount of latency. So right now you can see I have a round trip of 10.7 milliseconds. If I increase this all the way to 10.24, you can now see that increase to 51.3 milliseconds. So I suggest when you're recording, starting around 128 or 256, the one thing to remember is that the lower the number, the harder your computer has to work. So if you start hearing glitches and artifacts in your recordings, then you wanna make sure that you increase this buffer size so that your computer gets a little bit more relief. Once we've got that all set, we can close our preferences and then we'll make sure to choose our audio input. Right now it's set to one plus two, which is a stereo track. We actually just want a mono track because we're just recording one guitar into one input on our audio interface. I'm gonna have mine plugged into input two, so that's what I'm gonna select there. And audio output, generally one and two is what you want. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create and there we have our audio track. I can easily rename this track just by double clicking here. Typing in electric guitar. I can also change this icon as well by right clicking. And let's go to guitar and we can choose an electric guitar icon there. Now, if we haven't already, you wanna make sure that you plug in your electric guitar. So you have your patch cord on one end into your guitar. And then you would plug the other end of your patch cord into your audio interface. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm plugging mine into input two. My microphone is currently using input one. Now, one thing that might not be obvious right away is that most audio interfaces have combo jacks on the front. So those will accept both XLR microphone cables as well as patch cables. So if yours looks like it does on the screen, then you have a combo jack and you can plug in both a microphone cable as well as a patch cable for your guitar. So now that we have an audio track and our guitar plugged into our audio interface, it's time to adjust our levels. So I'm gonna hit the little R button here for record. And if I strum a chord, you should see some signal here. 
If you look down here, my level is currently at minus 16.7. Let's drum a little bit louder. That'll increase a little bit. So that's a pretty good level. Anywhere from kind of minus 18 to minus 10 is a good range to be in. And that gives you some room in case you hit a chord a lot louder, then you still have some room before you start peaking. If you're only seeing a little bit of level like this, then you'll want to turn up the gain on your audio interface to make sure you have a nice, healthy level. And if on the other hand, you're peaking and getting in the red, well, then you want to make sure you turn that gain down. Once we have a nice level, you probably want to tune your guitar. And there's a real easy way to do that straight from Logic. So you just go up here and hit this little tuning fork, and that'll open up our tuner. And then you can go ahead and play your guitar and tune as needed. Once you're all tuned up, we can close this. Now at this point, you should be hearing kind of an acoustic sound coming out of your speakers or your headphones from your electric guitar. If you're not, you want to make sure you hit this little I button, which is for input monitoring. Whether or not you have to hit this button to hear yourself will depend on your preferences. So if you want to change those, you can go up to Logic Pro, Preferences, then Audio, and then under General, you'll see here, if you just have software monitoring check marked, then you'll be able to hear yourself right away as soon as you click just the little R button. But if you have this input monitoring only, then you'll need to press this input monitoring button as well to hear yourself. For myself, I generally leave that unchecked and then I can hear myself right away when I hit the record button. So now we wanna actually make this sound like an electric guitar that it's going through an amp. So to do that, we need to load the amp designer onto our audio track. So we have our audio track right here, and we have right here, you can see where it says audio effects. You can click on that, go down to amps and pedals, and then we have amp designer here. Click on that. And here you can see our amp. And if I play a chord now, it'll start sounding a little bit more like an electric guitar. And you can see we have all the amp knobs available to us. So if we want some more distortion, we can bring up the gain. We can play with the EQ to tweak our tone a little bit. We can add some more reverb if we want. We can turn on some tremolo as well. Or switch that to vibrato. We can adjust the speed and the depth. I'm gonna turn that off for a second. And then over here, we can also change the mic position. So you can experiment with how that changes the sound, as well as you can also change the mic itself. So we can go to a 57 to 421 to a ribbon, like how we started. Now, this is just one of the many amps that we have available to us. And you can kind of guess by the look of it that this looks like a Vox amp. So that's what it's modeling. Now, if you go here to amp, you can either change the amp individually. And you can change the cabinet individually. So you can mix and match different amps and different cabinets. If you go to model here, then it'll switch them in tandem. And the nice thing about switching models is it doesn't actually switch any of your settings. So you can see my gain is currently just above six here. And if I change to something else, well, it keeps the same setting as well. 
So you can experiment and see how different amps sound with the same settings. And then if you wanna look at some presets, well, you can go up here to where it says factory default. And let's say you wanna explore some distorted sounds, then you can check that out. And if you wanna just scroll through more of those distorted presets, then you can just hit the little arrow here and that'll go to the next one. until you find a sound that you like. So that's a bit of a rundown for the amp designer. Now, there's also a bunch of pedals that you can try too as well. So let's load those in. So I'm gonna go back here to my channel strip and I'm gonna go right above the amp and click. And then I'll go to amps and pedals and then pedal board. So the reason I went above is I wanted to load that pedal board before the amp. Because if you think about recording with a real amp, well, you'd have your guitar and then plug those into the pedal board and then the pedal board would go into the amp. So I'm keeping that order the same. So the input here is my guitar, then into the pedal board, then into the amp. Now you can, of course, explore and experiment with having the pedal board after the amp, but I'm just doing it like this just because that's how you would normally have it in a real world situation. So with the pedal board, you can see all the different pedals that you have available. You can try different fuzz pedals. We have a flanger, phaser, some tremolo. <laughs> A spin box, so this is kind of mimicking a Leslie speaker for an organ. Can change the speed. Brighten it up. And you can bypass it just by turning the on and off switch here. And of course you can load in more than one pedal at the same time. So there's a quick look at how you would go about building your guitar tone from scratch. Now let's take a look at some of the presets that Logic has to offer that'll get you started really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my pedal board. I'm gonna unrecord this track. And now I'm gonna create a new track. So I'm just gonna go to the plus button here. And now instead of audio, like we selected before, I'm gonna go guitar or bass. I'm gonna once again, change my input to input two. I'm gonna uncheck input monitoring and I'm gonna check record enable. And I'll go ahead and hit create. And then now you see it opened up my library here, which I can get to by this icon up here. So I can show and hide it like that. Or you can press the letter Y on your keyboard to open it up. Now, if we look at the channel strip for our track, you can see there's a whole bunch of different plugins loaded in. So there's a noise gate, there's a pedal board like we had, there's the amp, there's EQ, and there's compression. So Logic loaded a whole channel strip preset for us. And that would be the clean guitar, Brit and clean preset. So that sounds like this. So as the name suggests, pretty clean. And we can try another one. So now if I click on here, you'll notice that changed some of the plugins in here. And if we see what that sounds like. Still pretty clean. So we are under the clean heading. So these are all gonna be fairly clean sounding.
Now, if you want to get into some more crunchy sounds, we can check that out as well. Or some more distorted guitars. And some experimental stuff too. So there's a whole bunch of presets that you can check out to get started with the sound right away. And don't forget that you can also tweak these presets too. Let's go back and find something to start with. So, so let's say I like the starting place with this, but I want to tweak it a little bit more. So all I need to do is, for example, I can open up the amp designer and if I want a little bit less gain, for example, bring that down. Or if I want a little bit more reverb, I can tweak that. Or I can check out what's happening on the pedal board. So right now the drive is off, so I can turn that on. Adjust the tone. So don't be afraid to open up some of these plugins within the channel strip and mess around with those settings too to get the sound that you want. Now when it comes time to record, I'm just gonna close all this. One thing that's good practice to do is if you are getting a little bit of that latency that we talked about earlier, you can go up here to record and then click on low latency mode. And then now you'll notice that this down here changed to orange. And this, so this is a send and it's going to this bus two, which is a reverb. So in low latency mode, Logic is gonna disable any plugins that are producing too much latency. So in this case, it's disabling this send. So while I'm in low latency mode and I'm recording, this send is gonna be disabled, so I'm not gonna get the reverb from that space designer. But as soon as I'm done recording and I turn low latency mode off, then you'll see that'll be re-enabled. If you find that Logic is disabling certain plugins that you really wanna hear, what you can do is click here and click on low latency safe. And then you see that it's no longer disabled. So you've told Logic that I wanna hear this send regardless of how much latency it's producing. Now, before I record anything, I'll just give a bit of a disclaimer that I'm not a guitar player. Keyboard is my main instrument, but I'll do what I can for a little demo for you. So if I was recording this in a session that already had some other instruments, and let's say I wanted to start recording from bar five, for example, I would generally create a cycle, so my loop, and I'll click in here and put that for the duration that I wanna record. And then that way, when I hit the record button, it's gonna start recording at bar five. But the playback will start depending on where I have my count in set. So if I go back up here to record, to count in, you'll see I have one bar set. So that means I'll get one bar of count in, and then it'll start recording at bar five. So I'm just gonna adjust my tempo because like I said, I'm not a great guitar player. So I'll set that to 90. And then I'll just go ahead and hit the letter R on my keyboard and that'll give me one bar counted. So there we've gone ahead and recorded eight bars of guitar. And now if I mess something up and I decide I want to do a second take, all I have to do is re-record right over that same track. So I'm gonna hit R on my keyboard once again, 
and I'm just going to record right over what I just did. and then spacebar to stop. So now you'll see here we have take one and take two. So Logic has created a comp track. So now I can decide what I want Logic to play back. If I want it to play back take one, I can just click here on take one and you'll see that that's now highlighted and take two is grayed out. And then this top track just mirrors whatever is selected down here. So if I go and click on take two, and that'll put take two up here, and take two will be selected down here as well. Now the great thing about comp tracks is you can select bits and pieces of your performance. So if I decide that the first half I played better on take one, well then I can just click down here and drag. Now I have the first four bars of take one, and the next four bars of take two. And you can see here where that split happened. Now I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit because one thing you wanna make sure is you don't wanna make the switch directly on a chord, so you kinda wanna do it between the two chords. Somewhere around there is probably gonna work well. And then you can see up here at the top that it actually automatically creates a little crossfade for you. Then once you've done making all your edits and your comp, you can hit the little arrow button here. That'll just minimize the track and you'll just see the final edit here. So I hope that's been helpful to be able to record your electric guitar using the Amp Designer plugin. The Amp Designer is great if you don't wanna wake up your neighbors with a big loud guitar amp, you can just plug directly into your audio interface, put on your headphones, and nobody can hear you outside of the room you're recording in. If you have any other questions about recording guitar using the Amp Designer, please feel free to leave those in the comments. And if you want to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, make sure to download my free Logic Pro Hotkey Cheat Sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.